Well, I'm a general practitioner and uh, I've been working in women's health for many years, over 20 years, possibly more. Um, I think that I very much, as time goes on, uh, believe that women's health is something that ideally is done from a general practice setting because there are so many areas and it's becoming more obvious to women's health that it's actually probably GPs who have a special interest in it that can actually manage it best. So they can manage the hormonal side of things. But of course, there's many other things. There are nowadays issues to do with cardiovascular health, which is different in women than men, osteoporosis, and then all of the uh, mood and counselling aspects. And coming from a general practice setting, actually, we can do all of those things because we're trained in all of those things. Well, menopause is really quite simple. Menopause is just when the ovaries run out of eggs and when the ovaries run out of eggs, they run out of estrogen. And it's that lack of estrogen which actually gives the symptoms of menopause to some women. Um, not everybody gets symptoms at menopause, but only about 20% of women don't get any symptoms. So 20% of women don't get any symptoms. About 60% of women get something happening for around four to five years, and about 20% of women will still have symptoms well into their 60s, uh, and they're the ones with really quite severe disabling symptoms who we're particularly keen to at least give information to about what can, what can uh, help. Uh, so that's simply what menopause is. A lot of people think progesterone, uh, the lack or need for it is part of menopause, and it really isn't anything to do with that. It's all to do with lacking estrogen over time. Well, the symptoms of menopause can be variable. The, the, the commonest one people think about is hot flushes, and that certainly is a common one for many women. So hot flushes in the daytime and night sweats. Interestingly, for, some, for quite a lot of women, even more um, prominent are joint aches and muscle pains. But most women would be aware of that symptom of hot flushes and night sweats. And if you're only getting a few of them, it's not a big deal. But for some women, it can really completely ruin their lives, those symptoms. There are other symptoms in other areas of the body like vaginal dryness uh, and for some women uh, mood disturbance and changes in concentration and memory that can be happening. Well, along with those symptoms, the reduction of uh, estrogen actually influences many body systems where I think most people would be aware that estrogen or menopause itself can have an, uh, an influence on the bone. So osteoporosis can become a problem without estrogen. And also there can be effects on the heart and the brain. Uh, people would be aware that as women go through menopause, they sort of catch up with men in terms of their risk of heart disease. The treatment options, uh, we're, um, the, the gold standard, shall we say, that we compare other treatments to is HRT. And HRT is estrogen. And for some women who haven't had a hysterectomy, it's estrogen plus progesterone. So that's the conventional HRT. It's a good umbrella treatment. It works for all of those symptoms I've mentioned. Um, it's not something that everybody wants to use and it's not something everybody can use, but it is the gold standard. The other options, which we call the non-hormonal options, are ones that act on different symptoms. Uh, we're looking for different ones that affect hot flushes, but they don't do an umbrella treatment. And it's always something where we, I'm very keen that we look for options for women so that they can choose from a range of options for treatment, depending on their own personal medical history and, and what their needs are. T taking HRT is very much something where it has to be individualised. So for, the, for healthy women, and by healthy I mean women who ha are not smoking, have normal blood pressure and who take HRT at the time of menopause, it's a very safe treatment for a number of years. Um, but for long term, if women want to take HRT, especially the combined HRT after five years, there is a small but significant increase in breast cancer and that's the decision women have to make who are taking combined HRT at the five-year mark. 
not everybody needs to take it long term, but if they need to, they have to go through a weighing up process of what's what uh, quality of life versus uh, possible risk. For some women, for those 20% who aren't getting really much at all, it's they say they're breezing through it and they're not needing anything and that's very appropriate. Those women are just really wanting information about healthy lifestyle. For the majority of women who get four to five years of, shall we say, trouble, it can impact on them quite a bit, um, especially for women who are out there in the workforce. They might be, uh, you know, running meetings or whatever and certainly getting a sudden hot flush in a meeting and losing concentration and feeling that they look different can be very disturbing for them. There are those women at the, other, at the end of the spectrum, 20% of women, who are really having a nightmare of a time, who uh, are getting, uh, you know, 20 hot flushes a day, taking layers of clothes off and especially disturbing their sleep. They're getting up three times a night to change their nighties or their bed clothes. You don't get a good night's sleep. You don't feel good the next day. So it's very variable. Uh, and I think it's important not to... Uh, take one woman's experience of uh, breezing through menopause and another at the other end of the spectrum of having an absolutely ghastly time. It's something where we need to listen to women individually and really um, optimise whatever might be available for them. Well, I guess that age thing is interesting because a lot of women really don't quite want to face up to the fact that maybe, maybe they're starting to go through menopause. So menopause is the final period. You don't know it's your final period till you haven't had a period for 12 months. And that final period is normal anywhere between 45 and 55. So for those women at the lower end of the spectrum at 45, um, where their last period is at 45, for four to five years prior to that, they may be having some early symptoms. So that's actually from 40. And women may like to start getting some information at least about menopause or what treatment options are available. It would be quite normal uh, uh, to be having symptoms even at that young age and to be, uh, it's appropriate to go and get information from someone who's experienced in the area. I'd encourage women to get information from reliable sources and to realise that their quality of life is something that is just as important as any other medical issue. And I'd encourage doctors, uh, if they're not perhaps particularly interested or up with the latest in menopause, to at least refer those women on somewhere where they can get appropriate. In it's all about giving women information and women can then make their own choices as to what options they may want to choose.